What's up guys, in this video we're gonna be taking a look at a plugin called Kodi. So as always, you can find all of the commands and all the configuration over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link in the description for my NeoVim config if you're interested in checking that out. All right, so what is Kodi? Kodi is an interactive scratch pad for hackers, um, or at least that's how it's explained over on their GitHub. It opens virtual text, which displays the results of evaluating each line as you type with NeoVim asynchronously. So um, you will need NeoVim for the virtual text to work, and I think that's one of the coolest features of this plugin, so I recommend using NeoVim for this. Vim will still work, but it'll open up in like a window split. It's extensible to nearly any language that provides a REPL or an interactive interpreter. So what is a REPL? A REPL is a read eval print loop. And if you've ever typed something like Python, or if you've ever done something like Node, then you've opened up a REPL before. So this would be like the Python REPL and Node is like a JavaScript REPL. All right, so now it supports uh, languages like Python and JavaScript obviously, but also supports things like C++, Lua, and a bunch of other languages as well. All right, so let's talk about installation. So we're gonna be installing this from my GitHub, um, but I don't recommend doing that forever. Uh, so this is the original GitHub. Uh, Metakirby5 is, I guess, the maintainer here. Now, they, when they originally put this out, they didn't have the option to support virtual text. Uh, someone came along and forked it and then tried to put in a PR to enable the virtual text, and uh, they have not accepted that PR yet. So I just took all the latest updates from this guy here and uh, plugged in this guy's fork and put that all here. So when this guy actually uh, updates the repo with the virtual text, I recommend just moving back to this. All right, so before we go into configuration, I, I just wanna kinda show what this thing does. So we're gonna be opening up a Python file. All right, so this is the binary search algorithm in Python, right? Um, I figured we would use this because I think where Cody really shines is kind of like just um, giving you like kind of a view into what's going on in uh, algorithms and things like that. I think it's really useful for things like that. So I'm just going to press uh, colon and then I'm going to type Cody. All right. So now you'll notice all this green text just popped up next to everything. And this is what's called virtual text, right? So. Let's take a look at what we're actually actually getting here. So what does the binary search al algorithm really do, right? So what it does is I pass it something in this sorted array uh, that I'm looking for. So like zero, one, two, okay, I'm, I wanna look for two. And then it's gonna tell me where two is. So it'll say zero, one, two, it's in the two, it's in the second or really third position, right? So what we'll do is we'll replace two with something like six, all right? Now, you'll notice that all of these numbers updated, and we'll go over that in a second, but it also now tells me that it's in the sixth position here. So, not only that, but what we can do is we can go over here to this array, and now if I get rid of all this, it's all updating as I do it. And you'll notice too, if I do something like this, I get an error. Um, and so it'll also let you know if there's errors. Now, after I've updated that, you can see that now six is in the zeroth position. And also the length of the array is now 11 instead of I think initially it was 17. All right, so that's kind of just already some really cool stuff that you can see. You can just kind of evaluate binary search like just as you go. So like if you want to search for, I don't know, 11, um, we'll do another one there. And that's in the fifth position. And this is the, like the algorithm that got us there, right? So we're gonna talk about that in a second. So let's look for, I don't know, let's look for, what would be a more difficult one? I guess six has three iterations there. So if you look at the columns here, and how I did this was I just created some uh, arrays up here, and then I just appended their values inside of the searching algorithm so that I could kind of like look at them later. So what happened here? So basically we have zero and 10. So zero and 10 are the low position in the array and the high position in the array. Um, and then the middle of zero and 10 is five. And if you don't know how binary search uh, works, this you don't need to know how binary search works really for this, but it's kind of just showing you what's happening iteration by iteration. So zero and 10 and then five's in the middle. And then the value of five is 11. And so that was on the first iteration of, of this algorithm, right? So then on the second iteration, this is what it looks like. And then on the third iteration, this is what it looks like. 
So then you'll find like, okay, well, it found six at zero and that's it. So you can actually see what's happening through your algorithm. And that's what I really found that Cody is super useful for. It's useful for other things too, but just imagine if you were going through all your algorithms and you were kind of just trying to figure out what this thing was doing. Like if I wanted to get to 12, what, what does this thing do to get me to 12? All right, so this is exactly all the values that it goes through before it gets to 12. So yeah, I just found that pretty interesting and useful. Um, and that was the best way that I could think to, uh, to demo this thing. All right, so that's it working. So let's talk about some of the configuration for it. Now, changing the color, I have it set to green. I think here I have it set to cyan, but you know, you can set it to whatever you want. Um, also, you can change this little arrow here if you want to, like the prefix there. Um, I just set it to the original because I think that looks fine, but if you want to change it, you can. Also, there's aliases, so like if you want uh, JSX to be interpreted as JavaScript, you can do that too. I'm sure that'll be useful for maybe other languages down the line, but yeah, there's this uh, option for aliases. All right, so now the commands. Now you watch me go in there and do Cody. Now, if you want to turn it off, I actually haven't found a way to successfully turn it off. So if I do Cody and then bang, it doesn't turn off. If I do Cody, bang, bang, which will usually uh, toggle things, that doesn't turn off either. So. I don't know, I can't turn it off, but it's still pretty cool. All right, now there's also a shell wrapper here. Like uh, I found this in their docs for um, kind of just starting it up immediately. So if you're interested in doing something like that, if you just want to do something really fast, like just get a scratch pad really fast, you can just type Cody, like if you put this in your bash RC or Z shell RC, and then you can just start typing like, I don't know, like you could even just do like math, right? And just get 13. So you can do really, like really fast math. I think you could just like, I mean, this is totally pointless, but if you wanted to print out like a string or something like that, I don't know. But yeah, mostly I think this thing is super useful for like algorithms and maybe just other, uh, like just evaluating what's going on inside your functions, right? All right, so I also wanted to go over some notes. So this plugin um, has been a little bit buggy. Like for instance, I can't turn it off. Um, and then on Vim, I, I don't like its behavior as much on Vim, but this part works really, really well. So like when it's on in NeoVim with the virtual text, it's really, really cool. Um, the maintainer and the guy who forked it, who added the virtual text, they don't seem to be super active on it. Uh, maybe you guys can go, you know, open up some issues and see if you can poke around uh, there a little bit. Uh, I. At some point, I might possibly try and fix the toggling. That's something I want to look into. But I do not plan on maintaining or adding features. I also left a note there. So I wouldn't try to open too many features over or uh, issues or feature requests over on my GitHub because I don't plan on really maintaining it. I'm just hoping that the other guy eventually gets back to work on it. Um, as I said, I have a fork over on my GitHub and I recommend you use that one until they update this. And yeah, hopefully they update it soon. Now I left some repo links to the original guy's repo, the MetaKirby 5. Um, that would be, I guess I don't have it open up there, but you know you can check that out. And uh, yeah, so this I guess this this is the Pablo one. So this is the original one here, MetaKirby 5. And then this guy Pablo, um, or that's the virtual text fork. This is my fork, and then down here is the virtual text fork. Okay, and this guy Pablo1107, he uh, essentially implemented the really cool features. So he doesn't really, he only has like one star on this. So, you know, I would go give him a star because the virtual text thing is really cool. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I found this in another YouTube video if you guys wanna go check that out. So this guy over here, his name's Ephem Polvoy or something like that. So if you want to check that out, this is actually where I found it. This is the only place where I ever even saw this thing like working, especially with the virtual text, which was really cool. I don't know how this guy found this thing. So yeah, so you know, go go give him an upvote for this because uh, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to find this. Um, what else? Yeah, so I guess I just have my fork if you want to go check that out. But I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, so. You know, as always, um, you can go check out the Discord. So we have a pretty active Discord community. So I would definitely recommend joining that. You can get there uh, from the YouTube page. I'll leave a link in the description or you can get it to here from my blog with all my links. I'm also over on Patreon. If you have the means to support me there, I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.